Today we're going to take a look at the Windows subsystem for Linux running and Sybil. Now I've got a 2019 server that I've already configured and I've got a 2016 server that I'm just about to configure the WinRM on. Um, this is just going to be a self-signed cert because we have neither of these machines connected to a domain. However, we'll probably go into a domain version in a later video. But for the moment, that's just to make sure that the firewall is correctly set and that these machines are on the network etc. Now I've got my Ubuntu uh, subsystem installed here so I'm going to go ahead and now install the uh, Python component and also the and Sybil component so I'm just going to go ahead and get those with an apt-get install and once they're installed we'll start showing you how you can use and Sybil under the Windows Linux subsystem and for now I'm probably just going to call it uh, WLS because frankly it's a lot easier to say. So while we wait for the install to run, and this does take a, a fair bit, so what I'm going to do is speed the video ahead a little. So we're now going to run it about four or five times the real speed in order to just skip us ahead toward the end of the installation. Um, depending on the speed of your internet connection, obviously this might take some time. I've got a decent connection and it still took a good five to six minutes for this to run. Um, realistically, depends up to your machine speed and internet really. So anyway, um, after the installation, we're going to go ahead and start configuring the host file in Ansible. So first of all, we're going to clear the screen and we're going to go into the Ansible host fol uh, file. Now that's stored under the uh, ECT, um, then under Ansible and then under hosts. So we're just going to go ahead and configure that. Now, remember if you're not root, you need root privileges for this. And rather than create a blank file, I'm just going to ignore the examples here and just add to the bottom of it, um, simply to save time. Uh, realistically, it's best if you clean this file out or just make note of it somewhere in case you ever need to refer to the examples. So here I'm going to put in the Windows group and I'm going to configure the administrator and my super secret password which at this point I would normally say use and Sybil secrets that's a different discussion I'm not going to cover that in this video but don't store them in plain text like this it's just just don't do it and I've only done it in this example because I wanted to simply save time for the purpose of the video so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ping my Windows server group and I'm going to do the dash M for modules and it's win underscore ping and I'm going to get an error because it just occurred to me that I have missed one step in this process. What I have not done is I have not installed the Python uh, WinRM module. So I'm just going to clear this and we're going to go ahead and do a pin install. And we're going to need to do this as admin as well. So in this case, the sudo. And we're going to install the Python or py WinRM and we want a version 0 0.3 or greater so we're just going to do the greater than or equal to and then dot zero dot three dot zero and we'll hopefully get a reasonable version so in this case we, we have pulled back now we can go ahead and try our ping again and this time around we should receive a successful response so that's from first host and there's a second host so we're now able to connect to both of the servers now since we've done the basic of checking that we've got simple connectivity, let's go ahead and create a playbook. Now playbooks are nothing more than just a simple set of instructions as to what you want to do with these machines. So in this particular example, I know that I already have uh, WinZip 7 on one of the machines, but I don't have it on the other. So whichever machine doesn't have it is going to have it installed and it's going to be done by the chocolatey package now I also know that chocolatey is not on the 2016 machine so when we do the run for our playbook here what we should see is the gathering task goes okay and then when we get to the task that says install 7-zip uh, 7-zip is going to come back it was successful on one and then the other one is going to tell us that it's not there and chocolatey is not there so it's going to go ahead and install chocolatey and then it's going to install 7-zip uh, so we're just going to wait a moment for this to run 
Now what I've done is I've not sped up this part of the video. I want you to see what it runs like in real time. So this is the speed it took to connect to the other machines, run through the configuration. So here you can see that it's found that one machine didn't have chocolatey and didn't have 7-zip. So it's gone ahead and installed chocolatey and installed 7-zip. And then it's moved on to the next task, which is the critical Windows updates. Now I took the liberty of installing the critical updates before this video because frankly it takes forever otherwise and we'd have another 20 minutes of runtime that I need to speed my way through. So just checking that uh, 7-zip has been installed and I just want to show you also one behavioral thing. Um, if you do a choco list which should usually list the chocolatey packages you're going to get a failure because we're still logged in. And it's only in this circumstance that I've seen this behavior. Normally, if you're installing as that user, uh, Chocolatey will immediately run from the command prompt. But in this particular instance, because we've installed it remotely, uh, that kind of only works if I log out and in again, and then everything fires up and I can do a Choco list. Not entirely clear why this behavior is there compared with, since it's effectively the same user, but just something to make note of. So if I sign back in and do a Choco list this time around, you'll see that, yes, Chocolatey is there, and so is the 7-zip package. And also, if I go and run the playbook again, uh, we should not see any changes this time. So if I run it second time around, first of all, it's going to run a bit faster than it did the first time. Uh, and secondly, you will only have uh, OK message output because there's no changes, there's no unreachables. Well, hopefully there's no unreachables unless one of these machines crashed. And there's going to be no failures because we well, currently don't have anything super complicated that could fail. But just as an example, uh, this is how you can run uh, Ansible on the Windows 10. And that basically concludes our video for today. If you liked the video, you know what to do. If you didn't, you also know what to do.